approach in a way that you see that all three of us will uh, address the same sort of questions. And I, I have a lot that I can just refer to what Mandy and, uh, and Eric just said, so that, uh, that that's, uh, I think, will add to the coherence of the session. Uh, before I start, maybe a few words of how I came to DCK. We've had several love declarations in the past couple of days. <laughs> um, I can say that I was I was doing, and I was actually inspired by what Eric just talked about the project that, that they were doing. When I did a PhD in, uh, in Utrecht in the Netherlands uh, on chemical equilibrium, the project was very similar actually to the structure of the project to what Eric uh, just described. Uh, I was very much focused on designing lesson series for students in high school to learn chemical equilibrium. Of course, I wanted to improve their understanding of what was inherently a difficult topic. And it was in a rather late stage that when I got the teachers together who were working with the materials, that I became fascinated by the way they talked about working with, I mean, you could talk in terms of fidelity, like they didn't really use the lesson series all the time the way that I had intended, but they had their own ways of explaining about equilibrium models that they used, and that became fascinating for me, and then at some point somebody alerted me to the work of Shulman, and when I read that and the ideas of PCK, it all made sense, and it was like, oh, wow, this is what they're talking about. This is this is PCK, what they're talking about. <coughs> That in, in, in the end led to the article that was published in 1998 in, uh, in JAST that you could say sort of launched my, my career. Um, so what I will do, and, and as you see, Inika and I put this uh, presentation together, uh, is um, basically uh, talk about the three questions. And the first question, um, as you can see in your, in your program, is that whether PCK is personal and situational or also collective. And, uh, our answer to that is it's both. Um, we think that PCK is personal, as knowledge tends to be, as, as people construct personal knowledge. Uh, but it draws upon sources, and I'll, I'll go into that later on, uh, of which some, and maybe most of them, are canonical. So there is a canonical, um, uh, there are canonical elements as input to the development of PCK, but we would say that PCK as it itself is a form of personal and also situational knowledge. Um, PCK is professional knowledge, meaning it's, the, it's, it's uh, quoting Schulman, the, the, the unique realm of teachers and the province of teachers. It is the, teach, the knowledge that teachers use in, uh, in classes to promote student learning of particular subject matter. And by sharing it, by talking with colleagues, as I just found out in our project, and also with what Ben was talking about, it becomes collective, it becomes articulate, and there may be shared elements. Moving to the discussion that Judy, I think, raised in, in her famous 1999 piece, where, uh, where the transformative and the integrated models of PCK are discussed. Um, that's something that's a very interesting, if you look at the literature, how many people have uh, used those ideas and, and maybe also struggled with the ideas, uh, what is transformative, what is integrated. <coughs> our answer to this is, uh, is it, 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 it is a bit of both. Uh, maybe, this is a, maybe this is a Dutch way to, to, to <laughs> say, well, it's not, it's not one or two, it is, it is end to end. Um, I will show you in the next slide that what we mean by how PCK is based on transformation and, and also how the integration uh, takes place. I think the next slide does a better job if you can read that. Yes, I think, I think you can. Um, so it summarizes the last, the, the previous two, that you can see that we think of sources and what you see in the sources, it's not, ex, uh, it's not an extensive list, but it's what we call, um, you could say that it was, um, there's a lot of research-based knowledge out there. Um, that teachers may find useful in, in, in their development of their teaching and their knowledge about teaching. Um, and we would say that all that knowledge, knowledge that, you, that you could say is canonical, needs to be transformed by a teacher in a certain situation. So that, that explains the, the transformative aspects. aspects. Uh, but you can learn about, for instance, um, all the different uh, ways to teach uh, natural selection or all the different ideas that are you can find in the literature that students may have about natural selection, you can get, get that from the theory, that could add up to your knowledge of one of those elements of PCK, still in, in, in our idea that is not yet PCK as such, that's just knowledge as more or less a static 
box. Right? And for us, it is important when we talk about PCK is that the integration of the different elements uh, takes place. And how that how that works, that's not really pictured uh, in this, but that's why we use this uh, model. You, some of you may know this from the literature, from a paper from Park and Hollings from 10 years ago. <coughs> We've used it in several of our studies, and this is a, a, a little bit adapted from the original version. Um, you probably get the idea, or I hope you get the idea, if you look at the different elements and the connections, the external sources of information, <coughs> that is what I was just talking about, the, the canonical research-based knowledge that can serve as input. Uh, teachers who already have some PCK, it may be very initial PCK, um, may, act may actively study that information, but also reflect on that information, and just reflecting on that information may be one way to develop PCK. But another very important, of course, is where, is where PCK is enacted during what's called here professional experimentation, you could say just classroom teaching, but for beginning teachers or in the teacher education program, it is, can be, a, 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 or in a PE program, it can be a form of experimentation, trying out something new. The external sources of information may be used as input to try out something new. Um, and again, reflecting on what's going, what happens in practice may lead to the development of PCK, may help to integrate those different elements. By experimenting in practice, you may find out how your students in your class actually think about natural selection, the kind of questions that they ask, the kind of difficulties that they encounter, and that may help the teacher to, reflecting on the teaching, connect with the ideas that uh, he or she had found in the literature about how to teach natural selection. So that's how the integration between elements may begin to take place. And also this is uh, an element that we put in, in the model, the idea of collegial interactions. Uh, you can have a session, this is where um, external sources can be discussed in group sessions and reflecting on that may in, uh, uh, lead to the development of PCK. Also, of course, when teachers share the experience during professional experimentation, collectively reflecting on that, that also may uh, develop teachers' individual PCK. And that leads me to the, the final question about ex explicit or tested aspects of PCK. Um, I'm sure that all of you had the experience, and it's also demonstrated in the literature, that when teachers, um, and maybe especially not only including experts, maybe especially experts, they cannot always <coughs> explain why they teach subject matter in the way they do. They can talk about the strategies that they use, and you can see those in the classroom, and they can tell you, like, yeah, these are the materials, these are the textbooks, this is, these are my slides, this is what I do. They can all also be, be very explicit about the way to assess the, the student's knowledge. They can show you the test that they use, for instance. But the underlying pedagogical reasoning, why they use that, the purposes they want to achieve, or the, 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 what they know about student learning, which informs, hopefully, why they use that particular strategy, that is very hard to explain for many, uh, for many teachers. And of course, oh, what do I do? <laughs> uh, of course, we need ourselves to ask the question, uh, uh, is it always necessary for teachers to make their PCK explicit? If a teacher functions in, in, in a professional situation, uh, we as researchers may be interested, but it's not always necessary, I guess, and it's not always, and it can also be quite tedious for a teacher to be asked to make, make, uh, to make their PCK explicit. But in a PD program, or in a setting where people get together, like in the sort of settings that, that Andrew was talking about, it can help teachers to make, uh, um, Talking about what they do and why they do what they do when they teach something better can make uh, into that collective knowledge base that, for instance, for a new teacher can be very informative to learn about. So, at least making PCK explicit can be very helpful for beginning teachers. Another question, maybe for, for us to consider later, is the, um, uh, is, the, is the question how can we use classroom observations and research on PCK if we want, as a researcher, to make can we infer parts, certain parts of PCK, and if yes, what sort of PCK can we infer from, from looking at what a teacher actually does? Well, these are questions for maybe later in this session. Thank you. Thank you.